Hi, everybody. It is Kathy, and I love to be selling. Come on in, sellers. Let's talk eBay. Come on in and settle in. Let me know how your weather is. Let me know that you can hear me. Um, I do have, <laughs> I am getting over a cold, so if I sound a little bit like Marlena Dietrich, <laughs> that is what is going on. Um, but I do want to be live with you today. So just let me know how you are. A little chilly here in New York today um, and rainy. I'm in New York, if you don't know. Um, but I want to go live and I want to talk about writing the most fabulous eBay titles. And it is so much easier than you think. I've got some great tips to help you with that. But come on in, come on in. Um, and while you're settling in, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Kathy Terrell. And I'm a top rated seller on eBay. I have had the joy of selling on eBay for over 12 years, and I started real small like a lot of sellers, just sort of decluttering my home and getting rid of things. I really did not intend anything more than just, you know, selling some odds and ends. And what I found was that I loved selling on eBay, and I was due for a change. So what I did was I grew and I scaled my business. I am a full-time seller. I'm trained as an eBay sales consultant. Um, so I can help people with their eBay businesses. I am a consultant and a social media consultant. I work with sellers of all sizes from very small to extremely large. I do manage some accounts for like large Amazon sellers that are selling on eBay. I've got over 25 years of brick and mortar experience here in New York city and brick and mortar retail. And I was on the QVC shopping channel for over six years. And I did that uh, as a product presenter, sold a lot of different products. And what's great with that is you learn a lot about sales selling on QVC and you're selling something that customers can't touch. So with, now that's with video. So with video and with your words, you are conveying the desirability of that product to customers. So it's great to take my retail experience, my QVC experience, and then everything I learn on eBay and blending that all together for you. What my specialty is, is eBay search, getting your items found in eBay search. Actually, I was on the phone with a client today working on that. Um, and social media, giving you social media tips, which can help your items to get found on eBay search. And that is why we're talking about your title today. And what got me thinking about this is, is that you can write what you think is a fine listing because you're looking at the item. Um, and this is true, whether you're a newer seller or a more experienced seller, and, and you write a listing and you put it up, um, and if it sells within a reasonable amount of time, you're like, yay, you know, <laughs> and you're packing it and you're shipping it and it's like, good, good, good. Um, but it can be a lot more frustrating um, when you put something up and it's been up for maybe a month or two. And that's what was happening with the seller that I was working with today. And you feel like your listing's fine. And it's like, why am I not getting views? And why is this item not selling? Um, I'm assuming it's going to be an item that you did do some research. So you check solds, you saw that this was an item that sells. And then for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be selling. Okay. So just comment below. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me know how you're doing. Um, and I'm going to tell you how to do an awesome eBay title. So this is what happens. And I'm going to actually screen share with you so you can see what I'm talking about. And for those of you that are joining me by audio, you're going to need to search for this and you are going to need to look for it and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So what you wanna do is, and you can do this, it helps to do this for big brands is you're gonna hop on eBay and I am gonna share my screen. And what I'm gonna be doing, hi Latours, how are you? Thank you so much. We are gonna look at Coach Bags, which is one of my favorite searches just because it is so broad. So let's look at Coach Bags. And these are all sellers that, you know, have put up their listings and I'm sure think, hey, you know, here's my listing. Why isn't it selling? Okay. And I've got up here, I do have um, listings that are auction as well as fixed price because what we're looking at is the title. So this, we're not talking about pricing. We're not talking about format, whether it's auction or not. All we're interested in is the item's title. 
Now, the first thing with this um, brown bag, authentic vintage USA old coach brown leather bucket, and I'm going to actually click on this listing, is they've got an emoji on here, 100%. So that was the first thing. And this seller has 100% positive feedback. So yay for this seller. But what I want to mention is, and this is because of the fact that um, many sellers are on social media. Um, you might be on Instagram where there's lots of emojis, which are those little icons. Um, you might be on Poshmark where I see a lot of sellers using um, emojis. Is emojis are not a great idea for titles on eBay. And again, I actually worked with a client earlier this week <laughs> on this. Um, is if you do have a heavy social media background, if you love Instagram, which is great, um, and if you're coming over from Poshmark, you might be used to using a lot of emojis in your titles. It is not a great best practice for eBay, and I will tell you why. It is because it is a um, it's considered a gimmicky character. And the problem with a gimmicky character, it would be like somebody that's using a lot of exclamation points or a lot of parentheses. Um, a lot of times people um, used to use the ampersands is you think you're grabbing people's attention and you might. The problem is that Google doesn't recognize it. And in many ways, eBay search mimics Google search. So Google actually says, don't use gimmicky characters that they will pretty much spit out listings that use gimmicky characters. What happens is that when eBay feeds the information from the title to Google is that Google will not recognize it. And that means is that your item will not be found with Google search and it won't be found on Google shopping. It could also impede your results on eBay. So my best suggestion to you is do not use emojis in your title. Now, because I'm going to talk both sides of it, because I want you to understand, and then you can make the best choice for you, is if for some reason, so let's say there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are 10 of these bucket bags on eBay, and let's say they're all very comparably priced, okay? And let's say I'm not really concerned how I rank on Google. And I'm even going to say, perhaps I don't care so much about eBay search, which is sort of weird because I'm not sure why um, you wouldn't care about eBay search, but let's just pretend um, that we don't, okay? Is then perhaps this is the only thing, I mean, I don't use emojis on titles. I really strongly recommend that people don't use emojis on titles is I'm trying to stand out in eBay search and that's why I'm doing it. The thing is, though, with eBay search, is there are a lot better ways to stand out on eBay search? And I'm going to work with you on your title, which will help you to stand out. Emojis may look cute. It may grab your eye. But because of the fact that it can hurt you in search and because it hurts you with Google, that little bit of thing where it might grab that one customer, there's, there's so much search benefit that you're losing by using the emoji. I don't think the trade-off is worth it. Okay, so that was my first thought for you is don't use emojis. Okay, so we are now going to, um, let me get out of that and go back to the search because I want you to see all these bags. So number one, and it was great that that jumped out um, just because of the fact that um, emojis have come up for me with a couple of clients this week and I wanted to pass that on to you is don't use them in your titles. If you're posting on Instagram, yes, then it's fine to use them, but not in the title itself on eBay, okay? So let's take a look at these purses. So we've got, so again, it it is an old coach. It is brown leather. It is a bucket. So that's all good keywords, okay? Black satin, rabbit fur with this one, good. And you've got the um, the number on it so that they know what the number is for this bag. Good. Coach Legacy. Now, what eBay says for titles and what Google says for titles is it's better to use upper and lower case. The times that you don't do upper and lower case, that you would use all caps, is if, if the company's name is all caps. For instance, if I was selling an HP, I'm going to come back to you guys, if I was selling an HP printer, 
HP is an all cap title company. So I would do capital H, capital P if I'm selling an HP printer. I do see coach at times all capped. I do see it upper and lower case. So you can do it either way. But the legacy, I would do upper and lower case. For most companies, I'm thinking like Michael Kors, um, I'm thinking Kate Spade, you would want to do upper and lower case. There was a format that a lot of people were using. This is going back maybe eight or nine years ago. If you've been selling on eBay for a while, or if you were selling on eBay in the past and you've come back, it used to be recommended by a lot of different places to capitalize your title, your entire title. And I will come across that when I'm working with private clients, the entire title is capped. Now, the reason it was advocated for is that it made it easier to read. And you might see blog posts on this. You might see YouTubes on this, but check the date. In all likelihood, it's going to be seven, eight, nine years old. Because again, this was before a lot of the um, intricacies of search took place. So perhaps for many people, the capitalization, this is also before a lot of mobile, before a lot of mobile shopping was going on, is that the capitalization was helping as far as people being able to read it. That is no longer the case. So Google and eBay both ask for upper and lower case. And if they are asking for it, it potentially means that if you don't do it, it's hurting you in search. So you don't want to do that. There's no reason to do that. So let's go back to this. And so, okay, so that would be better to just do, you could do coach capped, but legacy would be better upper and lower case. And here's a good one. And this one says sponsored. So I know it's a promoted listing signature, Python, Stripe, perfect carry all excellent keyword shoulder bag. Good, good, good. Down here, vintage coach, tan leather wallet, purse bag clutch. Again, good. Cause it's a clutch slim card wallet. You see all these great keywords. So that's the thing is go into the category that you're listing in. And again, don't take hours doing this, do this quickly. Particularly when you're doing items under 50, you really want the research to be done in under 10 minutes. Coach Brown leather pouch sleeve organizer bag. Look at these great keywords. Change coin bag. Excellent. Canvas leather black gray. So you know it's canvas and it's leather. The fabric matters because Coach does some bags in leather, some bags in fabric. Multicolor, yes. Small, yes. Best not to do the condition in the title. This seller has done pre-owned in the title and you notice that the entire title is capped. Okay. Also notice they do not have any bids. Okay. So perhaps, <coughs> excuse me, I'm grab some tape. It's got six days to go. It is a cute bag. <coughs> Sorry about this. Uh, I thought I'd be okay. I don't know. <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. There we go. Upper and lower case. And don't put the condition in the title. We've got another one right next to it. <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Slim stripe crossbody demi bag. Excellent keywords. Again, you want to do upper and lower case. Again, notice no bids. So really take a look at this. <coughs> Sorry. Of great, great keywords. Do upper and lower case. Don't do the condition. Don't be using emojis. And what you do want to do for titles is you do want to do 75 to 80 characters. There are studies that longer character usage, you get better results. Okay. So you don't want to do a coach bag listing where it's only three or four words. The ones we we're looking at were good. They had more than that, which is good. The mistakes they were making was emojis, putting the condition in and doing all caps and really look at the other keywords that people are using and see if you get an idea like flap, snap closure, zipper, right? Because different purses close differently and it matters. Some people, they want that zipper closure. Other people really like the magnets. Okay. So whatever item you're selling, when you look at a dress, 
You know, is it the neckline? Because people do search by neckline. Is it V-neck? Is it scoop neck? Is it classic neck? And if you're not sure what the neckline is, Pinterest actually is loaded with some great fashion boards. You can also just Google women's necklines and you're going to find all kinds of stuff. And just quickly look, you know, what is a V-neck? What is a scoop? What is a cold shoulder for sleeve style? And include that in your listings because you want to do 75 to 80 characters, no emojis, right? We're not Instagram. Um, and do not put the condition in the title. The only time I would use the condition and perhaps have Google not be so happy with me, vintage items that um, might have an original box that would increase the value of the item. I'm thinking perhaps um, I had a vintage clock once. It was a West Clocks made in USA from Woolworths. Okay, so first of all, you know, made in USA clock, you're like, wow, that's old, right? It was in the original box from Woolworths with a Woolworths price sticker on it. Now, clearly from the picture, you could see it was original box, but because there were other West clocks out there and the plastic, everything was intact. I was like, yay, this is such a great find, right? Is I did put, I think I did original box. I, I, I don't think I did packaging because packaging the word is just so long because I really wanted to point out to people what it was because it would appeal to collectors and it would also appeal to prop houses. So when you're looking at things, consider that if the original wrapping, packaging, even though it is in the condition notes, you know, new and packaged, is so distinctive that it's worth the potential hit I might get from Google because it's really going to help my shoppers when they're on mobile or looking on eBay. But by and large, you don't want the condition in the title. Um, and by and large, you want to keep those emojis out. There's no reason to have them there, and that can really hurt you um, to do that. And again, as far as condition, a time that I also might err and put some kind of condition note in the title is if there is some kind of defect in the item. If there's a pull thread, if the zipper is broken, if there's a chip or a break or a chip, I will oftentimes put that in the title if it's an item that's quite valuable. So I'm going to be listing an item that typically sells for a high price point at a much lower price point because I want the shopper to really realize what they're getting. And they may not read the condition notes and they may not read the description but that title is right there with the picture and really helps it to stand out. So titles with 75 to 80 characters loaded with good keywords. And you do want to put your most important keywords to the front of the title. It does matter. Typically that's the brand. Okay. Every now and then it'll be the period like Victorian or Edwardian, but typically it is the brand. Then you're going to be looking at color and pattern and size, but really load up your titles because it helps you to grab the attention of the shopper so they you know exactly from the title and your picture, what they're getting, the price, and that's going to drive you to get that bid, to get that sale. I mean, look at how many coach purses and they didn't have a bid. And I'm wondering if they went upper and lower case and really looked at their keywords that they might be getting a bid already because they had very low opening bids. Okay. And those are my tips for you to write. And again, you could go and look at that and look at the other um, items that are listed in four to five minutes. I mean, that is so fast. Just take quick notes either on your phone or a pen and paper. Um, and don't, and this is one of the things I was thinking of because I just did eBay up front this past week in Tampa is even when we're very, very experienced and we think we know all the keywords in certain categories, it is still worth it. I was reminded to stay teachable. It is still worth it <clears throat> to take that minute or two and go in and look. Is there some new keyword or new keyword combination I haven't thought of before that is getting a lot of attention? <coughs> Excuse me, that is getting souls. <coughs> Sorry, I'm worse than I thought. Um, be willing to learn. Be willing to discover something new. 
and not go in. I know this all, you know, when we're newer, we tend to know it's like, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, help me, help me, help me. But we get a little experience under our belts and sometimes become know-it-alls. And I don't want to do that. So look at the souls, look at other sellers, be willing to learn. You got to stay focused because sometimes you're so busy and willing to learn that you're sort of in perpetual motion of writing the keywords, you know, looking at other listings. I mean, you can spend hours on this and don't do that. I have my little clock. I'm going to get you my clock. 10 minutes on off, write them down, make choices, launch it. Go back in a couple of weeks if you're not getting the results you want and tweak.